boop boop da 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 yay what am i doing all fibers hi this is night all fibers a knitting podcast show notes will be in the ravelry group so head over there and join the night all fiber group my name is rachel and i'm the dyer behind night all fibers you can find me on ravelry and instagram as night all fibers Thank you to all new and returning viewers. I really enjoy making the videos and I'm happy to share my knitting with you. So without any further ado, grab your knitting and let the crafting begin. So this week I have a finished object and that is my flax by Tin Can Knit. And I basically used the pattern just as a template. So I used the general measurements. I modified it with some color work from 150 Scandinavian motifs by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And I just wanted to take a minute to show you a few things about that are in the book as well. So Here's some of the other color work that's in it, and here is here is a few more. I should probably do a better job at that. So, here is some of the color work that's in the book. And I really enjoy getting to choose from so many varieties. Let's see. Here is another. And I mean, you can just use such creativity and add just a little something to any pattern that you have that is simple enough. And so I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. So this one's the non superwash in the evergreen colorway and it softened up really nicely when I washed it and for the color work I used the Patton's Worsted in Heath Heather and so without any delay I will show you what the sweater looks like so I omitted the garter because I was just using the flax pattern as a template and I picked out the color work for it. The gauge and everything looks really nice blocked out and so I knit this on US 8's 5 millimeters, and the ribbing was done on US 6 4 millimeters, and I used a stretchy bind off because I definitely didn't want the hips to be snug. So this one was the Jenny stretchy bind off and there's not too much give but it made it nice and comfortable with the gauge that I was getting. Um, for the sleeves there's definitely more stretch to it. Um, so. You can see with the decreases right here I fudged a little and didn't really care if the color work was perfect and on this side it ended up ending with the numbers just right so you can see a little bit of trial and error with the modification but ultimately I can't wait to wear it and enjoy it so let's see last week because I did show it this, this two weeks ago I was working the sleeves concurrently, so I worked from here to here on the right sleeve and from here to here on the left sleeve. And so that was fun and it just took me a couple more days to finish it off. And I haven't wore it yet, but hopefully I'll get some pictures to insert to show you what it looks like because it's a lot of fun fun to knit and to wear. I added in I think a little extra waist shaping and I don't have a sweater bag that I normally use because they just kind of scrunch up my sweaters and I don't like it. 
but I use this big foldable tote from, you can get them at Walmart for only a couple dollars, but the bottom comes up and you can fold it down. So if I'm traveling or something, I can just stick this in my suitcase and set up a little knitting bin in the hotel so I don't lose any of my stuff. So the sweater easily fits inside and there's all the room in the world to put whatever else I need in there, like my interchangeable set or extra yarn and the books and patterns and everything. So that's my preferred way. I carry that around like each room to the house wherever I plan on my knitting time to be spent. So that's the only finished object I have for this week. Yeah, it's been two weeks since I last recorded, but I do have a new cast on. These are opal socks, sock yarn, and I did 60 stitches with a Turkish cast on, so the toe. Um, so I increased until 60 stitches, and the colorway is Cake Pops, and it's the Sweet and Spicy 2 line. And I've had this one in my stash for a while, and here's how the little picture shows it knitting up. And I wanted to try out my signature Needle Arts needles on them. The 2.25 millimeter US 1 40 inch cord. And the stitch definition is great on these. Um, and the colors really just been like spring and relaxing and yeah, I mean, I'm close to the heel on this and then I'll mark for my afterthought heel and I'm not sure if I'm going to use the same yarn or if I'm going to put in a contrast. It'll just depend if I can find a contrast that I like with these colors because um, here's one of my contrasts and that's not me, eh, just not working for this pair but um, it's working for my wear all mad here socks um, which I have one done. So just my plain vanilla and I'll probably try to do 20 rows of ribbing when I get to that and yeah I'm really enjoying those. The opal yarn has like a 10 year guarantee on it that's what the label says so I mean I enjoy knitting those because the color and the patterning I just can't get enough of it. Um. And then, since I showed you the purple, here is one finished, we're all mad here, except for the end. I did not weave that in or any of the others, but I have my llama sock blocker, my purple heel, and the night all fiber April colorway of the month, we're all mad here, and I'm just really having fun with this pair. I'm working these on my Addies. They are a 2.25 millimeter US 1. No idea how long the cord is, probably a 40. And I'm exactly on the row that I need to mark for my heel. So I'm at 7 and a fourth inches. And these are knitting up with a bit more speckle, which is nice. And then the purple heel that will be going in it. This will last quite a while for heels. This is West Yorkshire Spinners. I don't know the colorway, but I know it is going to make a nice heel. I have a couple other colors in that brand for heels set aside. And so I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple days and cast on May's colorway of the month. So. If you're seeing this before May 1st and you're interested in that colorway, just hop on over to Night All Fibers Etsy shop and see if it's still there. So here is my opening day cast on and I have a charm 
by Jelly Bean Charms on it. It's the little coffee cup. And I'm just using a Needle Cozy from Whimsy Stitches. And these socks, Mystery Yarn. I don't know what it is. It's a bit looser in gauge than what I'm used to. I don't know if you can see, but the Stellina is kind of just pulling out. I don't know why. I haven't had Stellina kind of shed like that before. And I've had these on for quite a while on the needles and they're just not getting any love or attention. So I'm thinking about just scrapping them, just letting them go and not worrying about knitting them or using the yarn because it's just the gauge isn't right, the Stellina's shedding on me, and I'll give you a closer look. They're pretty colors, but, and they're my baseball team's colors, but I just don't think the socks are meant to be. And I was using Haya Haya Bamboo, and not sure cord length, but I really like the needles. I've used these needles before. Um, they're not a pretty blunt tip, but I don't mind that at all. The join is really great on these, but I don't know. I've gotten good gauge with them in the past, and something with this, I don't know, maybe it's a mental thing, but it's just not enjoyable. And I always say knit what you enjoy, and those are not, not bringing me joy, so they're probably gonna get the frog. Um. Then, if you remember, I did a swatch a little while back with my Bear Hug colorway. So this is Night All Fibers Bear Hug on the Strong Twist base, which is a 75-25 merino nylon. And my goal for that was to knit the body of the sock arm sweater. And I'm loving this pattern. Like, this is bringing me so much joy. So I am on the second skein and working my way through it. And I have been knitting on this one like crazy. So I have bottom up sweater. And do you kind of see the V? Not the V, but like the stripe that's going through. I absolutely love that. It's working up great. So that's the front of the sweater. And here is the back of the sweater, and I just, I think it's going to be awesome. I worked my way through the ribbing, the main body, then the waist shaping, all the way up to the underarms, and now I'm working the um, upper chest. I'm about to bind off some stitches for the neckline, work some shoulders, and then pick up and do the same thing for the back. And then I'll get to do the sleeves in Princess Leia's Rescue. And this is the sparkle base for my yarn. So it's Night All Fibers Princess Leia's Rescue sparkle base. And so the striping it is a five striper and I can't wait to see this as sleeves. I'm like, I'm kind of been pushing really hard on the body because I'm just thrilled with this project and the combo. And yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a really good fit. I like my gauge. I am working with US 4 3.5 millimeter for the body on my Clover interchangeables. And I do have to say my interchangeables have been doing better lately because I have to really tighten them more than what I, you know, ever have to think about needles because I've used fixed circulars in the past. And I mean, it was just user error for them unscrewing on me um, now that I tighten them up really good no problem and yeah so I have the back stitches on a spare cable 
with the little um, knobs that you can buy to go along with the interchangeable set so I don't even have to mess with scrap yarn. And I've been using the charm that I got at DFW from Teeny Button Studio. So it's a little bread pudding souffle sort of thing. And I can't wait to have this one finished. So there's the sweater, the swatch, and the cake. Hopefully I'll be on the sweater sleeves pretty soon. I'm actually like so excited. So it's the Sock Arms sweater by Stephanie Lotvin. And yeah, I, I can't get enough of this pattern. I might have a second one planned. Just maybe. Um, so that was a lot of fun and has been kept, a, kept me busy. But, you know, one sweater is not enough to have on the needles. So, I cast on The Weekender by Andrea Mowry, which I believe I mentioned last time I recorded. Let me see if I can find the swatch. Yep, I've got the swatch right here. So I did swatching in the round again, which means that it was knit with these strands just carried in the back. It looks really messy now, but gave me a good idea of what in the round gauge was for me. And let me check my notes. I knit the swatch with US 8 5mm and the ribbing on the actual piece that I'm working was worked on 7s, which is a 4mm. Yep, four millimeter. No, 4.5 millimeter. There we go. And um, the pattern itself actually calls for the body to be knit on a US 9. So I went a size down on needle, and then I also went a size down on my measurement. So the bust size that I would be in the pattern is a 34, but with 10 inches of positive ease added on to 34 inches. I just don't think it would have been flattering on me. So the sweater is knit inside out. And so your pearl texture will actually be the outer facing side of the sweater with a slip stitch on the center of the front and the center of the back. This one's actually the front. That was the back because the split hem down at the bottom, the back is a little bit longer than the front. I am enjoying the color so much. I am using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Super Wash in Brass Heather. And I'm on my third ball of it. And it's just this really pretty brown yellow kind of a golden it's more on the um, golden side I would say than brown and I really do love it it's gonna be a nice add to my my sweater stack little collection that I've been growing and so it'll be nice to have the pearl on the outside opposed to the knit. And the reason why I went with superwash with this one, because I don't necessarily enjoy weaving in ends, I normally just go for the 100% and will spit splice, but um, I want to be able to wear this one around the house and with puppies jumping on me and just the general wear and tear of wearing a sweater daily, I want to be able to wash it quite easily. and. Superwash just seemed like the go-to easy option. And I'm enjoying it. I can definitely feel the difference between the Evergreen Bowl of the Andes, which is the 100%. It's a little bit fluffier and has a little bit more bounce to it. 
Um, but both yarns are really great. And I just keep showing you this color because I really love this color. If you can hear the dogs barking in the background, I'm sorry. I think the mail might have came or something. But that one is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, so I went with the smallest size, the 30 inch bust, with a needle size down. So that should give me a good size that won't look too oversized. I want it to look a little oversized, but not 10 inches because otherwise I'm going to look like I'm wearing a maternity top because it's just the way my body's shaped. i very like straight and narrow and yeah, I have to either wear fitted things or just, I don't know, more of an hourglass shape to it so that I don't look as, I get the boxy effect, but the boxy effect really can be exaggerated on my body shape. So that is knitting. Oh, what I'm drinking is David's tea. Which one am I drinking? I have too much tea. Mm, Buddha's Blend which is a white tea and it has like jasmine blossoms, no, hibiscus blossoms and jasmine pearls and it's really good. So that is what I'm drinking and that's all I'm knitting on. I do have um, plans to knit another sweater, sadly not for me, for my sister, she requested. Since Target changed the line that they carry in their store, I can't remember. I think she liked um, like the machine knit sweaters from Target. She liked the Mossimo brand, and since they don't carry that brand anymore, she saw me wearing my my Madewell, and she's just like, um, you know, do you think you could make me one of those? And I'm like, yeah, I can make you one. So it's. A nice simple she wants full length sleeves but just simple raglan nice and long and so I said okay I'll make you one I have some sweater quantity yarn that I've dyed that you can you know choose from so she chose a gray and I'm going to stripe in uh, what is it I cannot remember the colorway name, but I know it's one of the skeins I have from Lone Star Arts. And it's this pink and purple and black that's going to be striped in with the gray. And I think she's really going to love it. Um, so that's like coming up eventually. I want to work on my own sweaters first, of course. Be a selfish knitter. I encourage it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I feel like I've been knitting on something else, but I haven't been. These I have not been knitting on, so they're going to get the frog, like I said. And I might cast on another pair, but I think the goals for this next week are going to be to finish the We're All Mad Here socks. And just go from there and see what else comes and when inspiration strikes. For all I know, I might have five sweaters on the needles by next time. I doubt it. I have five sweater quantities in my possession, but I don't think I have any, any capability of knitting five different sweaters at once. But I do have some acquisitions, so I'll post. This is Mud Punch Yarn. A Color Lover Dyes Yarn. I love that. Um, this one is Teenager of the Year in their Slash Self-Striping Sock Base. 8020 Merino Nylon, 100 grams. And it's 385 yards. And that got me thinking, because normally a fingering weight you get 400 plus yards. So I kind of looked at the ply, and it's a four ply. But each of those four plies is also plied, so it's actually an eight ply. 
Um, it's really bouncy, so I'm going to treat it more like a sport weight, but definitely fun for socks. So that one is awesome. And then since Mother's Day is coming up, I got some Volenvine for my mom. And initially, she was interested in Edinburgh, and I was interested in tea leaves. Well, when I put them in the cart, I put Edinburgh in first, then I went back and got tea leaves. Then when I went to check out, the cart said Edinburgh was no longer in there. And so I said, would you mind if we just got two tea leaves? And my mom was happy with that because she really liked this colorway too. So I put two tea leaves in the cart, at least I thought I did. I went to go pay and transaction, all good, awesome. The yarn came and I got one tea leaves and one Edinburgh. And I think what happened is that for some reason this was still in my cart and when I went to put the second tea leaves in, I don't think I must have updated the cart. For whatever reason, I have these two in my possession. And um, so I went and checked my receipt to make sure, okay, so did I actually, was I supposed to get two tea leaves or is this what was supposed to come in the mail? And this is what was supposed to come in the mail. But the problem is, I love both and my mom loves both and so she told me surprise me for Mother's Day whichever one you want to give me so I know what's in my mom's stash and I try to think what would look good and so I still couldn't decide so I kind of tried to pry a little bit more and see which one she was gravitating towards and leaning towards more and we both couldn't decide, so she had the idea of maybe we could split them each 50-50. And I thought that was an awesome idea. So I'm still not sure what's going to happen, but they might be split into 250 gram skeins and be made into whatever our hearts desire. But this was the yarn acquisitions for this month. Then the uh, soak the wool wash that I had been talking about. Uni baby unicorn, unicorn baby, let's see. Unicorn baby, beyond clean. It's actually a laundry detergent. And what happened with the sample that I had was my sister wanted some things hand washed. So I was just like, here, use this. It gets things really clean. And um, so I learned to use less for my hand knits because it is actually concentrated laundry detergent but it is also really good for the wool and keeping it clean so I think like every third wash I'll use this on my hand knits and for those other washes I'll probably just use my soak because I love the fig scent in that um, so that also came in the mail and that concludes all the outpost everything that came and so I did go to get coffee with my mom and it's this great little place called Boomtown Coffee and I've been there once with my sister and I sat outside so I didn't really have to deal with too many people but um, when me and my mom went we sat inside because outside was crowded weekend nice weather and all that and um, I got a honey and milk latte. Um, it was one of their specialties. It was pretty good. I always get mine with soy milk or almond milk. And so I had that to sip on and the muggles were there. They were staring and like you just sit there and you knit or you knit and you don't even look at your knitting and the muggles just stare. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was pretty funny. Can you tell Harry Potter fan? So, um, let's see what else happened. Um, yeah, it's been anxiety knitting. I have had a lot of anxiety over the past two weeks. So that's where all the sweater knitting came from. Tons and tons of knitting time because I just have to keep my hands moving 
in case you have noticed, I'm knitting right now. Um, so, let's see. Oh, another thing about these needles is that they're sharper than Haya Haya Sharps. The signatures are. But for some reason, I always split yarn when I use Haya Haya Sharps. But with the signatures, I don't split the yarn, which my mom found very ironic and weird. But I'm just happy that I have needles that I enjoy that work. And I kind of wish I had a second pair, but I'm just gonna use it as motivation to finish, finish this opal pair and then be able to cast on a new pair with them. Um, so the anxiety knitting consisted of The Weekender by Andrea Mallory and The Sock Arm Sweater by Stephanie Lotvin. And as much joy as I'm getting out of those, I keep thinking of other things that I could be casting on. Like, those two are awesome. I can't wait to finish them and wear them. But my anxious brain just keeps, like, endless loop of what else can I knit? What else can I knit? And next thing you know, I have almost a full body of a sweater knit, and then I really have to think about what to cast on next. And so I guess that's where my sister's sweater might come in. Um, I don't think I'm quite ready. I have a skein of Dragon Horde yarn and a skein of gray, both I think DK weight, maybe one's DK and one's sport weight, which would work for a project I have in mind, but it would be a brioche color workish hat. I'm not describing it well, but that's also an option. But I think that if I get slightly distracted, I think I would get frustrated. And the yarn is just too beautiful to get frustrated with. So I'm going to wait until I'm a little bit more relaxed and able to focus on that sort of a knit. Um, let's see. What else happened over the past two weeks? I've dyed up some new colorways, so keep an eye out on the shop. Um, oh, self-striping. I have all my ready-to-ship self-striping. Um, 20% off through the end of this month, so if you're watching this in April, you might want to head over. It's been pretty awesome to be able to send things out right away to people and customers and, you know, be able to get the yarn to your hands faster. Um, let's see, hmm, I went to my favorite little, like, noodle place. It's kind of Chinese food, kind of, I, I don't know how to describe the food, but it's my favorite. So I got ginger tofu with snow peas, and it was really good. Sorry if I'm not looking at the camera. I just got distracted with watching my knitting. Um, so yeah, the food was really good and it was nice to get out for a little bit. And we are going to be, me and my family, so my mom, my dad, and my sister, we're all going to be going to the new Avengers movie tonight. And like I used to always get popcorn and candy at the theaters, but now the popcorn is too salty and it makes me feel icky and the candy is too sugary. So I just, you know, nibble before we go and then I sit and knit in the theater. <laughs> so I'll probably be taking the We're All Mad Here socks since I'm right at the uh, heel marker point. So I can just work for at least seven inches before I have to worry about changing what I'm doing to ribbing. Um, so we were watching Doctor Strange because my sister hadn't seen that one and something like that and she was just like, well, if you don't care that much about going to see the movie and when we go see it, how can you call yourself a Marvel fan? Just like, uh, I don't, I'm a James Bond fan. <laughs> um, I do enjoy the action movies and I have no problem going to see them. But I'm by far more like um, the Bourne movies with Matt Damon in them or the 
007, you know, James Bond, something high action and not comic. I do enjoy the Marvel movies, but not as much as the good classic action. Um, in fact, last week I did a James Bond marathon with, so it's the newest one, and I am forgetting the actor's name, but the um, Bond who's in Skyfall. We watched Daniel Craig, I think that's the right name. Uh, we watched all four of his in one day, me and my mom did. Um, we just put one in right after the other. So that's another point where a lot of sweater knitting got done. And so, puppy snuggles and knitting and movies. That is like my go-to. It's my perfect thing. Um, but I keep telling my mom every time we like are looking at yarn or at a show or something like that, you cannot let me get more sweater quantity. <laughs> I have five sweater quantities, and I, do I have five? Let's see, I have a sweater quantity of Barrett Wool, and that's a fingering weight sweater quantity. I have two leading men sweater quantities, just because I was vending at one of the shows they were at, and I really saw some colors that I didn't have. Um, and decided to go ahead and get those. And then I have another Knit Picks sweater quantity, and that's a sport weight, and I think that's going to be a Branches and Buds sweater, because I have a single skein of Chickadee from Quince & Co. that would look pretty as the color work for that. Yeah, so that's it. Four sweater quantities, not five. But then, of course, you know, I tend to think, oh, I just dyed up this new colorway. Wouldn't that be pretty as a sweater? I Or I'm shopping and I'm like, well, this yardage for this pattern, well, could I could just go get by with buying three skeins. I need to stop buying sweater quantity. And because I really, I love knitting up what I have and the sweater quantities that I have are really pretty and I just need to like knit those up and then I can easily buy whatever I want for the next one. I don't like buying sweater quantity and then finding out what pattern I want to knit and that's what I've done with these sweater quantities. Um, the Barrett wool I had knit to the point where I just had to do sleeves and it had too much ease. Um, it was probably close to 10 inches of ease and I don't know what happened with it. It was a lace back. So I knit an entire lace back to a sweater in fingering weight yarn. I knit the front and it was a pullover, so, um, and it was bottom up, so I couldn't try it on as I went. And I had to rip the whole thing out and the yarn has been sitting because I want to pick a good pattern for it this time. Um, and so, you know, other than that, I didn't pick out patterns before I bought yarn. I just kind of knew what I'd need for a sweater. So that's the goal, is just to kind of pair up some things with patterns and work my way through it. And then I'll be happy to buy more sweater quantity. Um, so I think I've been rambling for a while now, and we'll see you next week. So thank you for sitting and crafting with me for a little while, or just listening to me jabber. Um, see y'all next week.